Mike Barnes, as of Season 5, has had one of the best character arcs in the history of Cobra Kai. Once known as the Tournament Terror and Karate's Bad Boy, though arguably he probably still holds the ladder up pretty well, Mike found direction in his life and compared to Daniel and his rivals, lived a quiet but well-off life. That being said, it's interesting to note that with the flip of the switch, you don't want to be on his bad side. But how did he get to this point? This is why Mike Barnes is unpredictable. Let's talk about his path to redemption, his history and rivalry with Silver, what we can see from him in the future, and more. It should go without saying that there are spoilers, so if you haven't seen Cobra Kai Season 5, go watch that first and then come back. Let's recap on what we know about Mike Barnes so far. Feel free to skip ahead to the next chapter, but be warned, you may miss important details later on in the video. Little is known about Mike Barnes before the events of Karate Kid 3 or where he is from. What we do know is that Terry Silver sought him out for his revenge plan against Daniel LaRusso and Mr. Miyagi due to his reputation of being a top tournament karate fighter. Initially promised 25% in a prior phone call, Mike successfully negotiates 50% of ownership of the Cobra Kai dojos, getting it in writing and signing the contract that promises the reward as long as he terrorizes Daniel leading up to the tournament and defeats him at the 85 All Valley. Mike is simply aggressive in the first encounter, threatening only to fight Daniel to change his mind, but in the second encounter, once again confronts Daniel and Jessica at the Bonsai Tree store, assaulting Jessica, and beats Daniel into submission until Mr. Miyagi shows up. However, Mike, Snake, and Dennis succeed in stealing the stock of Bonsai Trees at Mr. Miyagi's residence. To try to help Mr. Miyagi, Daniel and Jessica retrieve the hidden Bonsai in Devil's Cauldron, but Mike forces Daniel to sign up for the tournament in exchange for his and Jessica's safety. Before leaving, Mike snaps the bonsai they've retrieved. While Daniel attempts to train on his own, Mike once again attacks Daniel at Mr. Miyagi's, but Silver saves Daniel from Mike and offers to train him as part of his elaborate scheme. Barnes is not seen again until after Daniel confronts Silver at the Cobra Kai Dojo to let him know he's no longer competing, where it's revealed he's been working with Silver the entire time. Mr. Miyagi intervenes and soundly defeats Terry Silver, Mike Barnes, and the undead John Kreese. Daniel faces Mike Barnes in the finals and is initially afraid of being hurt by Mike due to Silver's mind games who ordered Mike to torture Daniel as long as possible. But Mr. Miyagi orders him to not give in to fear and after grounding himself with the Miyagi Do Kata, Daniel intercepts Mike's attack and wins in sudden death overtime. Due to his unethical actions, Mike Barnes was banned from karate altogether and was forced to work odd jobs, eventually meeting his future father-in-law while moving furniture. Mike was shown that he could create with his hands instead of destroy, and soon discovered that his passion was furniture. He would go on to marry the daughter of the man that set him on the right path, and would run agorifying furnishings with his wife, selling in the valley. 34 years later, he is sought by Daniel LaRusso for any help in knowing anything Terry Silver might be hiding, who has returned and now runs Cobra Kai. The two bury the hatchet, though this is misinterpreted by Daniel's friend and former rival from Okinawa, Chosen Taguchi and the two fight to a stalemate when they are stopped by Daniel. Mike mentions that Silver made him sign a contract to terrorize Daniel in exchange for a share of Cobra Kai and hands over the lawyer's name who wrote the contract. However, Silver puts a stop to this plan and in return burns down the furniture store. As Daniel, Johnny, and Chosen are celebrating Carmen's pregnancy on the way to another bar, the limo is hijacked by Mike who accuses Daniel of setting fire to the store. Another fight ensues, though this time with Daniel's frenemy Johnny Lawrence, and it is once again put to a stop by Daniel, who explains that Silver is responsible. Mike forms a plan to simply beat up Silver, and everyone is on board except for Daniel, who is left stranded. Mike confronts his former sensei and takes out Min Jun, but is hit from behind by Sensei Vicario and is knocked out. Mike later awakens and saves Johnny from Yan Wu and Min Jun, and the two along with an injured Chosen, rush over to the Cobra Kai Dojo on the way to the hospital. As retaliation for his store burning down, Mike parks with a Rembrandt to sell so he can rebuild his store. Let's first talk about Mike Barnes' history and rivalry with Silver. Ken Cole and I previously did a discussion video on Mike Barnes, whether he would return back in February, and I'd like to bring up some relevant points from that discussion into this video. The first thing that should be brought up is that Silver not only manipulated Daniel, but Mike Barnes as well. While we don't know how exactly Mike was convinced to start working for Terry, one of our speculations involved maybe the fact that Mike and his family didn't come from a lot of money, and with a trustworthy figure like Terry Silver asking for his services, maybe his family thought it was okay to go along with his idea. 
Terry promised Mike a weekly draw and a car and a percentage of profit from the Cobra Kai dojos as long as he beat Daniel LaRusso at the 85 All Valley Tournament. However, as Ken Cole mentioned, Mike was made to go above and beyond as Daniel first refused to enter the tournament after talking with Mr. Miyagi. Thanks to the intel provided by Terry Silver, Mike would continually harass Daniel not only at his place of business, but also where he was staying. As part of Silver's plan, Mike was forced to pummel Daniel, even to a point where he played villain to Terry's hero, to gain the trust of Daniel. Some of the other negative qualities we see from Mike is his arrogance, due to his reputation as a top fighter, his willingness to not only attack Jessica, but to endanger her and Daniel's lives, and to also make threats of what the group would do to Jessica if he didn't compete in the tournament. Possibly due to both Kreese and Silver's influence, Barnes would also make racist remarks towards Mr. Miyagi, notably near the end of his match with Daniel. Even against Dempsey, we see why he is called the Tournament Terror. He would kick the groin area of both opponents on screen and wouldn't be afraid to do illegal strikes as he was asked to, solidifying him as one of the more ruthless opponents we've ever seen compete in the history of the All-Valley. Solely focused on his goal of beating Daniel, Barnes didn't even want to bow to him, one of his most iconic actions. What's interesting about the relationship we see between Mike and Silver is this is one of Boss and Employee, whereas previous films the rivals were typically a student and his sensei from opposing dojos. One can only wonder how this relationship was like behind the scenes. I would imagine that Mike would perhaps call Terry out on the terms of his contract before we knew the extensive details of the contract in Season 5 on how he was only called down to beat Daniel in the tournament, but now is having to go through so many more hoops to secure his percentage. While we don't know who Mike's original teacher was in terms of karate, we know that he learned both techniques and the principles of Cobra Kai as evidenced in his fight with Daniel. Strike first, strike hard, no mercy. It is possible that Mike was also trained in the Quicksilver method as we see him punch Daniel in the midsection, presumably in the solar plexus, uttering the classic, what's the matter sweetheart, you having trouble breathing? Before his fight with Daniel, he even shares a Cobra Kai handshake with his two current senseis. In Cobra Kai Season 5, it is clear that Mike is very apologetic about not only his actions and words, but sympathetic to Daniel's problems with Silver. While I will dive deeper into this later on in the section about his redemption, this could indicate that he never had a problem with Daniel personally. He was simply doing what he was ordered and paid to do. As always, this is never a justification, just the reason why it happened. However, it is also because of Daniel that Mike is now in Silver's crosshairs. While it is never stated, it is possible that Silver had planned to call Mike first and Daniel beat him to the punch thanks to Chosen's idea, with Ken Cole being right about Mike not being called first. When Daniel and Mike first discuss Silver, it is clear that Mike is still slighted about the agreement he had with him and how crazy his plan was, again correctly predicted by Mr. Cole. Because of Daniel purposely trying to seek out Silver's lawyer, in retaliation, Terry has Mike's furniture store burned down, causing problems for Mike's financial well-being and damaging his relationship with his wife. When he realizes who is really behind the destruction of his furniture store while coping with some sort of substance, it is Mike who brings Daniel's former rivals, and eventually Daniel himself, to finally confront Silver and make him pay for what he's done. In his interaction with Silver, we can see there's nothing but contempt, calling him out on his classic tactics that he's used back then and even now. If it wasn't for being knocked out by Sensei Vicario, Mike may have given Silver a run for his money. Let's also talk about Mike's path to redemption. While we see has completely changed his ways, there were some very brief subtle moments that Mike displayed anything other than pure rage. The first moment we see this is when Terry and Kreese reveal their plan to Daniel. Mike tells him, you're doing this to yourself. While this delivery was more than likely meaning that Mike was going to be able to easily overcome Daniel, it could also be read as a form of pity or sympathy, perhaps thinking Daniel needed to just lay down and lose so Terry could fulfill his plan. The second time is after Mr. Miyagi walks in after throwing Mike through the door. We hear him yell a scream of pain and surprise, and when he tries to regain his ground and dust himself off while going back to Silver's side, we can tell that Mike is slightly shaken, realizing how strong Mr. Miyagi truly is. After Mr. Miyagi walks away from defeating Silver, Mike finally wakes up and looks at Mr. Miyagi walking out, perhaps thinking he is way in over his head. The two final instances are in the match with Daniel. Mike is clearly confused and not sure what to do when Daniel performs his kata, as up until this point, Daniel had been afraid of Mike and this is why Mike was able to take advantage and constantly score points on Daniel. Although he could have easily struck Daniel, maybe he didn't want to because he saw his opponent was off guard and not in a fighting position. After Daniel strikes him, we can also see that after the match he is angry, constantly slamming his hand on the mat. 
Mike explained to Daniel that karate was all he knew and being banned from it left him without a purpose. Because of this, he was possibly stranded in Los Angeles after paying back the advance from the contract and worked a ton of odd jobs until he found his future father-in-law. This is significant because his father-in-law was the Mr. Miyagi that he needed as it was clear he was an angry youth taken advantage of by a manipulative businessman and needed guidance to be set on the right path. Instead of using his hands to destroy, he was taught to use his hands to create, leading to his passion of furniture. Mike apologizing to Daniel for his actions and words would also indicate that he never had a personal problem with Daniel, but rather was trying to do better for himself. Again, not justification, just a reason. Considering all the actions that he did in 1985, the fact that his father-in-law took him under his wing shows that Mike simply lacked a father figure and grew into a well-adjusted, successful business owner with a loving family. It's also clear that although the situation with Silver was bad, he took those same business skills and applied it to his trade, again something I called in our previous discussion. Although his approach to just confront Silver is questionable, depending on the point of view, Mike perhaps also did it as an act of redemption as he was relaying to Daniel that Silver has only destroyed people's lives and gotten away with it so many times. He was going to go so far to not only break his leg on the door, but to take on Silver himself as a parallel to his actions of breaking into the bonsai shop and Mr. Miyagi's property, making quick work of any sensei he needed to. Even after misunderstandings with both frenemies, Mike would go on to save Johnny's life in Chosen's, making sure the latter got medical care by helping him out of the car with assistance from Daniel. This character arc is one of my favorite arcs to ever come out of Cobra Kai because it did Mike Barnes so much justice. Similar to how the show has fleshed out details for Johnny, Daniel, Chosen, and even Kreese and Silver, Mike simply had a common problem that is present within the Miyagi-verse. He just didn't have guidance. The fact that he was able to use his aggression and true karate strength for what would be considered the right way, taking revenge on Silver, is nothing short of genius and still shows that the bad boy still has it after all these years. With that being said, how strong is Mike Barnes? As I've talked about before in prior videos, Mike has a reputation for being a renowned fighter. The fact that he has a national reputation in a karate magazine for being karate's bad boy speaks volumes of how good he is in terms of skill. The fact that Mike can trash talk while blocking and attacking is one of the biggest flexes I have ever seen in a fight scene. In the Karate Kid movies, Daniel's opponents usually have an advantage in their earlier fights and even in climactic battles he has with them, whether it's experience, aggressiveness, or ruthlessness in Mike's case. Whether it's formulaic or not, typically the antagonists usually get one or two battles over Daniel easily in the movies. It's not until he starts to train more that he's able to defeat them. We know that Mike is able to best Daniel in the two physical confrontations they have. I would like to point out though that in my Terry Silver analysis, Daniel should have been able to beat someone like Mike due to the fact that he also fought a similarly ruthless opponent in Chosen, but his skill and self-confidence was shaken due to Terry Silver's mind games. Does this mean that Daniel would have easily steamrolled Mike? Of course not. Considering that Daniel had nearly been training a year and was still getting bested by Mike, and why that's important is that he was able to defeat opponents like Johnny and Chosen, who both have at least four years of karate experience over Daniel, I think Mike is still one of the most highly skilled opponents in the Miyagi-verse. This is also evidenced further in Cobra Kai. If you cross Mike the wrong way, all it takes is a simple flip of the switch and his skills come back as if he's never stopped training. In Mike's scrap with Chosen, if you count the shove he does that knocks over Daniel and pushes Chosen aside as a hit, he ties with Chosen. Chosen would kick Barnes at a surprise and then stomp his leg. When Mike gets up, he does the shove and manages to land a hit on Chosen and Daniel and the two are unable to hit each other further as they tie up and are stopped by Daniel. When he fights with Johnny, he flips Johnny over to counter his charge attack, blocks a kick from Johnny, but still receives a kick from Johnny, showing that he and Johnny are tied. Given the fact that Daniel has been beaten by Chosen and has not been able to beat Johnny since 1984, this means that Mike is still on the same level as all of these senseis, and that's saying a lot, given the fact that he was caught off guard by Chosen and still managed to land a legitimate strike on him. I would also like to point out that in the raid on Silver's house, Mike subdued Min Jun in two attacks. Considering that it took both Johnny and Chosen to team up to take out Yan Wu, and that Mike was also likely on some type of substance, that also attests to his skill. It's not until he is taken out by Sensei Vicario with a statue that he's knocked out. But what about his physical strength? Similar to how Johnny broke a metal sign and Chosen broke stone, Mike is able to break bricks with his bare hands. I bring this up because I see a lot of discussions when discussing fantasy matchups 
that this can be argued as relevance to how strong someone is going into said matchup. I would also like to bring up that along with Karate, Mike just also uses his brute strength to throw Daniel around in Karate Kid Part 3, throwing him into wood and causing Daniel to also break a window, throwing him into another part of the store, using his opponent's momentum to throw him down onto the ground, and shoving him more inside the Cobra Kai Dojo. Mike's punches to the chest also notably caused Daniel to try to catch his breath, only being saved by Pat Johnson. 34 years later, Mike still has some of this strength. His shove causes Daniel to flip, his accidental punch to Daniel causes him to fly back, and he easily picks up Min Jun, ramming him into a wall and throws a right hook causing him to fly back. Mike's flying elbow leaves a satisfying crack, and his imitation of Dolph Ziggler's zigzag shows that he still has the ability to redirect momentum easily. I'd also like to point out that he possesses quite a amount of durability. Given the fact that he landed on furniture, had a vicious stomp on his knee from Chosen, one of the strongest senseis in the series, and was taken out by a statue, he still got up after both instances and fought with little slowdown. Here are my final thoughts on Mike Barnes and what we can expect from him in the future. Barnes is truly unpredictable. When you think you knew everything about him, he flipped the script and showed how he can be an invaluable asset in the right hands, whether money is involved or not. Despite being banned from karate, he's still at the top of his game and can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the best senseis in the world. I personally loved his interactions not only with Daniel, but with Chosen and Johnny. Sean Kanan absolutely killed it this season, and I feel that he was one of the best performances this entire season, alongside with Yuji and Thomas. I would love to personally see him aid Miyagi Fang in their training for the Sekai Tekai, though it's hard to say if he would want to have anything to do with karate after Silver going down. If not, perhaps he can at least provide some of his own experience on how he was a troubled youth and how he came over it, or at the very least why some rivalries aren't just worth holding on to. Definitely one of the most unpredictable things about Mike is that despite perhaps being the most ruthless rival, was his transformation into one of, if not, best well-adjusted adult in the franchise. Only time will tell what we'll see from Karate's badass, but I personally want more Mike screen time. Before I go, I want to give a quick shout out and thanks to my partners and affiliates. I now have official merchandise. Go to strifethewarrior.art or click on any of the merchandise below the comment section. If you're trying to prevent Miyagi fame from breaking into your server and exposing your diabolical scheme, then you'll need some strong security to protect your information. Go to nordvpn.com slash strifethewarrior or use coupon code strifethewarrior to get a NordVPN to your plan with a huge discount. You can use NordVPN to unlock Netflix and your favorite entertainment websites that are not available here in the US. You can connect up to 6 devices at the same time with one account. There is no data logging whatsoever and it works even in China. NordVPN works with Windows, macOS, Linux, iOS and Android, has a Chrome extension which is very user friendly and unlimited bandwidth. If you're not happy with it for any reason, there's a 30 day money back guarantee. With 7 All Valley Championships under its belt, it's no wonder why NordVPN is a winner. If you use this code, you also help directly support my channel. So go to nordvpn.com slash strifethewarrior or use coupon code strifethewarrior at checkout. Last but not least, I'm sure I have a good majority of gamers here in the audience, but did you know you can grab some excellent games while supporting charities at the same time? If you haven't already, you should check out Humble Bundle. They've raised over $200 million in charity since 2010 and feature a different charity site-wide every month. If you see a bundle you like, you can pay for what you want and in return get computer programs, games, ebooks, etc. and the proceeds support charity. Go to HumbleBundle.com and use my referral link in the description at checkout. These referral links help support the channel, so thank you NordVPN and thank you Humble Bundle. Let me know what you guys think down below. What did you like about Mike's Season 5 arc? If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like it, subscribe, share it with your friends and comment as these all help my channel grow. Also, if you like the dynamic of Cobra Kai, I highly recommend watching Tiger and Bunny. It's an anime about two superheroes overcoming their differences with a very similar dynamic that we see between Daniel and Johnny. Season 1, half of Season 2, and two movies are available on Netflix right now, with new episodes of Season 2 dropping next month on October 7th. I have a couple of videos out right now on who I believe to be the show's Johnny and Robbie, so check them out. Be sure to check out and subscribe to my second gaming channel. I'm trying to get this channel to a thousand subscribers and supporting this channel also helps me support my main channel. I'll be uploading more clips to this gaming channel, so stay tuned for that. Keep up with me on my socials via Instagram and Twitter. Shout out to my YouTube members, I appreciate the support. 
If you'd like to directly support the channel, consider becoming a member and enjoy perks such as VIP channels access in Discord, preview videos before release, 15% off of merch, members only live streams and chats and more, all for only 99 cents. Thanks for watching, stay beautiful, stay awesome, and we'll catch you around next time.